Hi, I'm Wake Speed Jr. from Total Steel Piston Rings, and I'm here with my good friend Charles Navarro from L Engineering here in your shop in beautiful Moments, Illinois. Yes, sir. So if you hear any trucks going down the road and stuff, you know, it's all right. Don't worry about it. We're, we're here in the shop, and we're here today to talk to you about a problem that's pretty common with the Porsche M96, M97 engines called bore scoring. Correct, and it's also, uh, we see this common with... Uh, the MA1 engine, also referred to a 9A1, and also Panamera, Cayenne, Macan uh, engines. Basically, any engine that has an Alusil uh, engine block, which is a hyper eutectic uh, engine block. So, Audis, other engines that also have Alusil blocks, probably not a lot of Corvair people out there watching the video, but if you are, hey, how you doing? So, yeah, like you said, anything that's hyper eutectic that has that silicon nodule embedded in aluminum is prone to this problem. And the reason for this problem, and the reason for this video series, is we're gonna do three things. One, we're gonna talk about why this problem occurs. What about alusil or localized silicon, locusil, what makes this problem stand out with these specific bore materials? Then we're gonna do is say, what can I do to know if I actually have the problem? Then we're gonna talk about what can I do to prevent this from happening to me. So we're going to do what the problem is, then we're going to talk about how to detect the problem, then we're going to talk about how to prevent the problem. So three-part video series, this is part one. So Charles, talk a little bit about Locusil and, and what it is, because obviously when you're saying sil, we're really talking about silicon. So explain a little bit about that. Then we're going to use our handy-dandy profilometer so the viewers can actually see what we're talking about, because otherwise we're just talking about a hunk of metal here, and it's kind of really hard to see what's happening at a nano microscopic scale where this problem actually occurs. So basically to uh, explain, so the Chevy Vega was pretty much the first uh, engine that had an alusil or hyper eutectic engine block. And uh, the alusil material, the whole crankcase is cast out of that material. With Locusil, uh, I kind of dumb it down. I call it localized alusil, where uh, the, the, the block itself can be cast out of regular aluminum. So but like the, this part's just regular aluminum. Correct. Okay. And you can see, if, if we can pull a close-up in here, you can see a difference in color in the aluminum uh, in the engine block. And basically, when they cast this block, they use a preform that has silicon particles suspended in a resin binder. So when they cast the block, the aluminum, the molten aluminum will infiltrate that precast uh, resin uh, binder and replace the resin with aluminum, and that leaves the silicon particles suspended in the aluminum, which then in later manufacturing, that the block can be honed and you go through a, a silicon particle exposure process. Uh, that is what is required so that the oil film can support the load of the pistons and the rings. Without those exposed silicon particles, you can't have a proper oil film to support uh, proper function. Okay, so essentially the silicon nodules are there to create a surface texture to hold the oil because ring seal, proper ring seal, proper lubrication of the piston is all about having the right oil, right place, right time, right amount. And it's that surface texture, that profile, which we're going to measure with the profilometer. That surface irregularity is what holds the oil that allows there to be enough oil at the right place, at the right time, in order to provide the lubrication to support this piston, to uh, protect the ring, and to seal the ring. Because if it's completely dry, the ring, well, well one will wear out. Number two, it actually can't seal. Just like a rear main seal on a car, there's actually a little film of oil between the seal and the crankshaft journal, and it's the surface tension of the oil that does the sealing. Same thing going on here. So if you want to, let's go ahead and just jump right into the profilometer, and let's measure some cylinders and let you see all these particles and surface textures we're talking about. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on our Mitutelio SJ210, which is our profilometer. Uh, handy dandy tool. Now what we've already done is on this cylinder right here that is scored, 
we've measured an area below ring travel. So Charles, talk a little bit about why we're choosing this area of the bore to measure, not just up here at the very top of the bore. So below ring travel, you get a good snapshot of what that surface finish was when the block was new. Because obviously in the area of ring travel that you have additional wear buildup from the ring going back and forth. So it's a very good idea if you want to get uh, that starting picture of what it was new to take that trace with a profilometer under ring travel. And especially in a scored bore, because there's been material transfer, you really can't measure up there and have an accurate picture of what caused the problem to begin with. Sure. This is a, that little snapshot, like Charles said, of what it was in the very beginning. So you can know, well, why did this bore fail? This bore didn't fail, yet this one did as well. Profilometer is gonna give us the answer. So while I was talking, it turned itself off because it's very energy conserving. So as you can see right here, these are the surface finish values that were measured with the profilometer on that surface. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna page over here and you're gonna be able to see this little trace right here. Those little peaks in valleys, which you see that there are more peaks than there are valleys, those are the silicon nodules, the particles Charles was talking about, that stick up, kind of like your uh, islands within the ocean. That you, it is the surface tension of the oil that will hang on to those particles that provides lubrication. There's your bearing area curve. But we're going to go back over here to the main page and look at these numbers. So these numbers are really important. So the first one is our RA, which is your roughness average, which in reality is that number will lie to you because it can be up, down. There's a lot of different ways you can get to RA. So it doesn't tell you enough, which is the reason why what we want to do here is I'm going to go back, uh -oh, saving the file. There we go. Um, the RK, that's your core roughness. It's 13 on this sample, but the RPK, that peak height, is 21. So that one's sticking way up. And then your RK down here is four. So your valley, which a lot of times will hold the oil, is four. So you don't have a whole lot of valley, but we got a whole lot of peak. So let's just see what happens when we compare that cylinder that failed to the cylinder that didn't fail. So all we have to do is move the profilometer and we're going to put it right back in here. All right, it's fixtured in place. Turn the profilometer back on and we're going to hit start and we can watch the surface trace. Okay, and our trace is showing some pretty interesting values here. So compared to the cylinder that failed, so our RPK went from 21 down to 19, but really and more importantly is our RVK increased to 11, that's your valley, that holds the oil, and then your RK, your core roughness, which supports the load, it went up to uh, 19. So we increased RPK, or sorry, RK, increased RVK, so we've increased the load bearing, oil carrying surface, really is what it is. It's, we got more area now to hold oil, even though the RA was the exact same. If you look at that value again, let me turn the profilometer back on, it timed itself out, I'm trying to save that battery life. Uh, RA of the, of the failed cylinder was eight, RA of the good cylinder was also eight, but it's that change in the RK and RVK that holds the oil that made the difference between why this one didn't fail and the other one did fail. And basically what that is coming from is that you have those exposed silicon particles. So as the motor wears, those silicon particles will fracture. And once you have about a 40% fracture rate of the silicon particles, it can no longer support 
the oil film to support the whole piston cylinder system. Right. If you don't have a core, that core roughness, again, that RK we were talking about, without that to hold the oil in between, there's nothing to supply the ring and the piston skirt with enough oil. Back to proper lubrication, right oil, right place, right time, right amount. And that surface profile is critically important to making sure there's enough oil at the right place, right time, right amount. So with that, with us knowing now that the problem really is all about surface finish. Now let's talk a little bit more in the next video about how we go about knowing there's a problem.